Hello, I'm Sister Joanne Iannotti, and I'm here at Listen House with Cecilia Marshall. Uh, I'm Art and Spirituality Coordinator here at Listen House, and Cecilia is with us today because she's going to be doing a program on the art of bookmaking, bookmaking for beginners. Cecilia is an art educator, and she's a, a book artist herself. It's kind of interesting, in this age of high tech, very often we've become very low touch, but in terms of the art of bookmaking, it's very, very much high touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, some wonderful pieces of art can be made as a result of it. And therefore, I just thought we'd uh, ask Cecilia, first of all, how you became interested in the art of bookmaking. Well, I, um, I loved books and I loved drawing since I was a child. And I went to um, college for, for art. I went back to college for art education and I minored in English. And my first job was actually teaching reading to children. And we had a lot of fun with all the different books and you know, materials for reading for children. And so the two just always stay together, books, art, visual, uh, word. And I um, had the opportunity to, um, well, I won a fellowship. And I went to Skidmore for about five weeks out of the summer on this fellowship. And I was actually painting these big abstractions, but I brought, they, they, told, they asked us to bring a lot of things because we'd be there for five weeks, and I brought all these scraps of paper and magazines that had pictures in old books, you know those old art books that they get very sort of um, moldy in your basement, <laughs> but the images are too wonderful to throw away. And, and, and so in my spare time in the evening, I was cutting these up and putting them together. Mm -hmm. and, and then I had an opportunity to to take a bookmaking class with Seth Colby, who's a fairly well-known book artist. Um, she has work in collections everywhere, and she travels around the country giving workshops. And it was from the point of view of content. So I did a lot of interesting things, and they were, they were, everyone loved them. There were a lot of family photos sort of collaged into each other. They didn't hold up very well. And the reason they didn't hold up very well was I hadn't learned. <laughs> I'd learned the next time I took a bookmaking course, I took a class um, where I learned actually how to put the, the books together and make a good cover for them and uh, use archival materials. And the um, Japanese potters have a saying that in order to achieve thusness, you must learn all the rules, then forget them. <laughs> so you learn the rules, and once you have the rules in place, then you're not going to put a wonderful image on a rolled piece of paper where it's going to crumple off eventually. Mm -hmm. You know you know how to put things in, you know what kind of paste to use, what kinds of glues, and all those things. And I became enamored with how um, beautiful the books mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm as well as what you can put into them. So the traditional Japanese stab binding method, um, very much, it's called stab binding because you make these little holes in here. And if you're working with paper bound books, which this is, which is the traditional way of doing it, then you can actually take an awl and do your holes. If you're working with a hard bound, which I find is a sort of nice method for making a safe place to put images, then you drill your holes and you can play around with how you, how many holes you drill and how much thread to use and patterning. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some traditional patterns and then this is, this is the very traditional, very simple pattern too. And you can see the stitching along the side, mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. your spine. And the interesting thing about this method, which I like, is that you are seeing all the stitching. You have the spine of your book, and yet you're able to open it flat and see the workmanship. You can see the craftsmanship. And the pages fold totally open and flat. Yes. So this is a blank journal. Um, and it's filled with beautiful paper from Nepal, which I got in a shop in Great Barrington. <laughs> and this is called a deco edge, when your edge is is left rough like this, so you mm -hmm. don't square it up, and I, I really like that kind of tactile feel right. of, of ripping the paper instead of instead of carefully cutting it. Although it certainly is nice to have um, a book that has nice carefully cut pages like this one, mm -hmm. which is, as you can see, with the Japanese stab binding, it's a tight book, which some artists might find too tight. But on the other hand, anything that you're going to put in here, if you want to tip in, like tipping in is when you put another sheet in and you glue it in. Um, if you want to put something in there, it's going to stay, it's protected. Um, if you write in it, it's going to be protected and closed nicely. Mm -hmm. um, a paper-bound one is going to open a little 
Right, I learned that that looks a little bit more relaxed. Like a little more relaxed. <laughs> so it all depends a lot on, you have to think ahead of what you're going to put in as your content to your book. It's a work in progress. I'm still working on it. And I can open each of these pages to work on my collaging as I'm going along. Mm -hmm. So I can think in sequence. I can think in narrative, oh. which is very nice. Of course, because you're making yeah. a book. Because you're making a book. And that's one of the, 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 the interesting aspects of the content of your book is it's a narrative. It can tell a story. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lot of words. It can be a visual story. It can be a story that has visuals and words. And I've also seen beautiful haikus done where each mm -hmm. each you know segment of the haiku is on a separate page, mm -hmm. and, and the the emphasis is on calligraphy, perhaps. So sure. You can, you can play around with that as well. Oh, just like the monks of the Middle Ages. Exactly. I, you know that the word for an illustrated book is illumination. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the root is illuminate, to light up. Right? Right. And yeah. it's in more ways than one. You're lighting up, you're illuminating your soul, you're illuminating your thoughts. And when you look at these beautiful illustrations right. and illumination. And that's what the monks did. They illuminated the scriptures. Exactly. Yeah. 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 To light them up. I love that. This is a fun form of bookmaking. It's actually, I'm going to show the back first. It's a concertina fold. It's simply folded paper like when you fold a fan when you're a child and you wanted to make a fan. Sometimes in church when it's hot, you fold <laughs> the brochures. And what I've done with this concertina fold is to make a sort of flip book. And when it opens up, it's all these little pieces of card. And the nice thing is that it's, it's not as hard as it looks. You just are putting them on every other section. You can also open it this way if you want to, if you want to look at each one. Each one, yes. Right, and all the little eyes, a <laughs> simple concertina fold again. And what it is, it's, a, it's an etching, and it's a modern etching. It's quite abstract. Mm -hmm. And by putting it into this concertina fold and closing it off, you're number one, you're binding it into a binding. Uh, you're making it as a, an object that opens and closes, and you're looking into it, and so that it goes beyond the sort of uh, abstract ideal into something that you also would use. It's, it's an interesting, you know, something you can carry around with you. Julia has shown us a number of what we would call traditional shapes of books, but she's also brought another shape that we would not necessarily consider a book, but it is. <laughs> this is a triptych, meaning it has three parts. And the traditional triptych always had a large center area, which had the main focus. Um, you see these as altar pieces. Um, and a lot of artists are now taking this format and, and just taking it a step further, doing different things with it. It closes up. So in my mind, it's very much a book. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then it opens. I think one of the wonderful things about books is the mystery of opening and closing and then what, the, what is contained inside. And I think that's one of those, those things that becomes very personal to the artist making it. And what I did here was I collaged a lot of images and text. Um, and and it, it was in a show, the artist for Peace Show at, at Milton Town Hall a few years ago, so that you have a Madonna and you have Venus and you have uh, Adam and Eve, and they're all awake and talking, but Mars is asleep. He's not really listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's entitled As Mars Sleeps. Oh. Um, and I put text in, and I was very lucky to find a um, very old book that was falling apart in a lovely way. Sometimes the pages are, they sort of crumple in your hands, but you still don't want to let go of it. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I, and so I play around with hard edges and ripped edges and soft edges and, and round areas. This side is mainly for, for um, Eve, this side is mainly for Adam, and then the centerpiece has the tree of knowledge mm. and various different images from different time periods. Yeah. Another way to tell a story, mm -hmm. another way to have fun, another way to create a piece of art, and that is through the art of bookmaking. So Cecilia, thank you very, very much for having me yeah. here today. And we hope that you continue to look at our upcoming programs at Wisdom House. You can go to our website, www.wisdomhouse.org, or you can call us here at Wisdom House to find out about more of our programs by calling 860-567-3163. Bye-bye for now.